So, break down what is Quick Draw about. It's about a sheriff who um, is a new sheriff in town, and he tries new techniques in order to uh, solve crimes, like, in this case, dressing up. <laughs> he basically did his training at Harvard University back in the 1870s, 1875, and this sheriff comes out from Cambridge, from Harvard, and he uh, decides to move to the Wild West and uh, apply his tra craft there as, a sh as the sheriff in Great Bend, uh, Kansas. But he's trained in all the latest criminology techniques of yeah. forensic science or ballistics. And th at this time, all of that stuff was just starting. Got it. So it's the beginning of crime scene investigation, mm -hmm. as we now know it. Before fingerprints, when people were like, I'm going to read how you're, you know, if you're a criminal by how your what your face looks like through phrenology. Got it, got it, um, got it. Ballistics was like, you know, in its infancy. Everything is in its pure infancy. For example, they didn't have fingerprinting yet. They hadn't figured that out. But they did know that everybody's ear is slightly different. Got so there it. are literally, literally, and a lot of the show is based on historically correct stuff. So there are literal drawings of criminals' ears that you could match up. So if you kill somebody, <laughs> you're like, did I just get Jesse James? The only way to do it would be to hold this picture of this guy's ear up, up to him. So how did you guys come up with the idea? Originally, I think that John wanted to do a Western. That's my memory of it. And then we got this location, <laughs> and then we started to think about the lo like what, what would we shoot if we could do this? Yeah. And then, um, and then we came up with the CSI element, and um, you know thought that that would make the show kind of sticky for people to want to come back week after week the way they do with the drama, you know. Make it a little have a little bit of a procedural element to it. We both, I mean, Nancy's a big mystery person and likes solving, you know, puzzles and mysteries. So we we kind of layered that in into it. I think in a really a cool way. So they're actually it, they are on they have a a crime or something that they're tracking, a murder, a crime, or some sort of, mm -hmm. you know, crim crime. So how many episodes do you guys have so far? And talk a little bit more about that format you were talking about, about how every episode, I'm assuming, there's a crime and there's yes. procedural aspects to that. So well, There's eight episodes, okay. and um, you know, each, each episode there will be somewhat of a mystery within each episode. I think everyone except, mm. yeah, they all have something that needs to be solved. But then there's also, um, you know, character arcs that go through the season. There's a one uh, mystery that will go through the season about his character that, um, you know, you find out some little bits of information along the way. It has a little bit of Sherlock Holmes to it. He's tra he has his own Moriarty evil, mm. you know, counterpart oh. that yes. he's tracking. Oh, cool. Uh, so, it, yeah, it has that kind of thing. They come to a crime scene, they observe it. Through observation, or he observes it. Through observation, he's able to determine certain things. Where townspeople are like, "What?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yes, the trajectory of the bullet is such that the shooter must have been up on that ridge. Let's go up there." And then they find the cartridge. See, I told. But the, but really, all of that's an excuse to get down to the mundanity of what it was like to live in eighteen in the eighteen seventies. Because we think there's a lot of comedy there. So there you go. So that's a good. So that's a good segue. So how do you then fold in the comedy? So you set up the story, and there's improv around that. So how do you mix structure and chaos together like that? Well, I mean, I think first of all, we what attracted us to 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 this was taking a lot of the things that really happened back then that nobody knows about. Uh, and I think some of the things you will watch in, the, in this show that you will think, oh, these guys just improv that. Funnily enough, those are the incidents where you're like, those were actual truths, you know? <laughs> Historical Everything facts. From, yeah. Um, we have an episode in an all-black town that was, you know, called Nicodemus. Uh -huh. That's based on a real place. It was made entirely of freed slaves. Yeah. God. You know, so yeah. there's like really cool historical facts yeah. that really haven't been explored in Western. So we want, we like that. And we have a show based on like the very first serial killers that known to man. You know, which was the the Benders, the Bloody Benders. As people, John knew of them. I had never heard of it, but out in I Kansas. I grew up in Kansas. And it was a family they, that went that was killing people essentially for we pleasure. think that's hilarious <laughs>
And that's the basis of good comedy. <laughs> you find like a tragedy here and say, how can I make a joke out of this? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, and the separation of time gives you a lot of leeway, too. Yeah. You know Got it. I mean? Uh, but but yeah, the way we work, we do write very specific scripts, Nancy and I. Like they're really dense. You can ask the uh, Hulu peeps. Uh, they're you know they're pretty uh, pretty condensed, single space, you know, chunky things. But the actors never see the scripts. Mm -hmm. The crew sees it. The executives see it. We know them obviously, but the but the actors never see it. So right before we shoot a scene, you know, Nancy will sort of explain a lot of what their characters about and where they're coming from and what they're trying to get in the scene. Right, a lot of backstory. And then I sort of know enough to lay any pipe that we need to lay for, you know, a narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then from there we just look for the chaos, yeah. the funny stuff. So that, okay, so that's a good segue again into the actors you brought in to sort of deliver in that format. So how, how did you select them and how did it all work together? A lot of them we've been working with for years. We did a show called Ten Items or Less for TBS, and um, uh, we, since then, have been doing a lot of other things where we have kind of a group of people now that we know. We like to mix uh, people who are very, very comfortable with doing improv, do you know, Groundlings and UCB and all those kinds of places, and we like to mix it up with people who don't do improv because. You know, our biggest thing is to, we don't want it to be like an improv show where everybody's trying to out outthink each other. Trying to prove how clever they are. Uh -huh. Right. We wanted to have the ground of like, this is really happening. And then they take it, you know, there's, of course, people who generate the material, John being the main person who is constantly generating. And, and he's on the inside sort of at knowing what the scripts are because he wrote them you know and and I'm on the outside so you know we're as we're working together we've collaborated on the writing and the and you know and he's I'm I'm on the outside sort of coaching everybody else and and reminding him okay this is you know these are the points we need to hit yeah our goal is just to create an environment where these actors can just be free yeah. and a, an actor driven show rather than a writer driven show like you might see in a multicam on a network got it so you speaking of environment the so the show is going to be on hulu uh this is is this your first foray in web original web content we did a web series for crackle called jailbait got it oh yes character yes. that i played that was, my god how could i forget? Yeah, yeah really yeah. uh out there uh web series but i don't really see this as uh web content i yeah. mean it, it's it's a half hour it's there's nothing about this that's going to look any different from any TV show. I think show. this, in a weird way, will have more... Uh, it's going to look better than our uh, television show, 10 Items. Uh, you know, we've, we've been able to, with this town and with the way we've now learned to work over the years, we've been able to really put all the money on the screen, and, and I think it's going to look better, I hate to say, than a lot of the television we've even well, done in the past. Yeah, we're getting better yeah. at what we do, and... Uh, we saw Hulu as just another network, just another way to get Got our it. message out and, and look at the ratings of some of the networks out there. They're hitting the same number. <laughs> and, and I think also the biggest thing for us was it, we had the ability to do eight shows rather than go through that process where you make a pilot, you wait a year, you're waiting for they that. They test You it. know, three years later, you're like, what was that show we were sort of doing? Yeah. The immediacy of being, of being able to, we handed them a sizzle reel, we, you Which know. Which we shot in July. Yeah, we, and now we're shooting eight episodes. That, to us, was really attractive. Oh, that was it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, just to reiterate, there's the line between what, a web series is and a TV show is essentially blurred completely where it doesn't really make sense to, I mean, to draw that comparison. Look at um, House of Cards. Got it. $100 million. Got Aggressive it. development's coming out. And they I don't mean, even have a car chase in it. You it know? feels like But the we've time got car chases. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you look at, like, uh, it reminds me of when Basic Cable started to come onto the scene. And now, you know, the best television is on Basic Cable. Yeah. And I think soon that will be true for uh, the web based stuff, too. Yeah, it, it reminds me of, like, the early days of HBO or something, you know, where people are just seeing alternatives to their programming and they're going, okay, 
you know, we're going to tune into that. Yeah, and the creatives, I think, recognize that and give us a lot of freedom to do what we want to do, okay. uh, you know, within reason. Yeah. But obviously. <laughs> okay. Well, who could say no to that? Who could say no? Who could say no? And they, and they didn't. You know what? You'd be surprised. <laughs> there are network executives out there being like, oh, I don't know. Let me ask about nine people and get them in a committee. <laughs> we'll caucus on it and get back to you in three months. So, so when you guys are coming up with the stories and you, you're thinking, okay, this I could play this character and that character, who usually goes a little bit too far and says, okay, no, 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 we need to draw it back? <laughs> <laughs> at this point, we uh, practically finish each other's sentences. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I... At this point, I think we write to crack each other up. Yes. I, and going we know too far. each one of us has a thing that we know will, you know, different things where we're like, oh, I know he's going to crack up over that. Okay. That's cool. All right. So, um, give me a pitch that I can tell anyone who's asking me, why should I watch Quick Draw? It's funny. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's funny, it's got drama, it's got, you know, it, and, and it's a genre that has not really been done before. It's completely new and different in every way. I would say that it's sticky. That you, mm -hmm. it's not like watching a one-off every single, an island, every single episode is its own thing and then it just hits the reset button. This has a flow and a world that you get drawn into these characters in a way that you, you don't on a traditional multicam sitcom. So cool. if you're looking for something offbeat, if you're looking for something that kind of makes you think a little bit, that totally cracks you up, and that's freewheeling, I think this is the show for you. This is the show for you. Yeah. All right. Well, and um, one final question for you guys. Um, during four weeks of production, um, a lot of different things happened, I hear. Uh, <laughs> and what's the most memorable thing from the production? Uh, good or bad or? Whichever just stands out the most. Wow. Um, I mean, we had a, a bit of a plague that hit the cast and crew. Um, 17 people uh, uh, went down. Uh, more than a third of our crew uh, went down sick day. on the same day. Yeah. And I mean, horrid. Yeah. Like, Vomiting, diarrhea at the same time. I mean, yeah, horrid. Both. I mean, I heard a story of someone actually, and that I was think me. it was you. That was me. Where I was sitting, sitting on the toilet. Throwing up that at horrible the same moment time. where... It was what not. What do I do? I hate myself. Please, God, and take every, my life. And every two minutes, I'd be like, hey, Nolan. Oh, he's in the. Okay. <laughs> and like, we had one thing where we were on a wide shot, and it was a guy who was supposed to be jumping to his death. It's a big stunt. Huge stunt. And we're on the wide, and all of a sudden, one of the actresses gets sick, runs off, gets sick. We go to the single of John, and then she comes back just in time for the wide shot. We pull back out. <laughs> The guy jumps off, and her, the final line, which I think will probably make the cut, she goes, I think I'm going to be sick. Oh. And that was it. It was like, oh, my God. So yeah, I went, I went up us. to our one of our art department people because I could see people were just walking around like zombies. It was like Dawn of the Dead. And and just walk. they would just get up and walk away and get in their cars and drive home. I mean, yeah. it was horrid. And this, I saw this one person in our art department. I went over to her, and I go, you've got, I think you should go home. And she goes, John, I'm the only one left <laughs> If I go, nobody yeah. will know where anything yeah. is. I had a friend stop by, and I was sitting alone, and there was, like, nobody there. And she's like, are you doing this all alone? And I was like, no. Kind of. <laughs> but we made our day, and we got everything. Yeah. And we're under budget. Yeah. No, there so, you go. We were happy.